Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Ansley. Today we're painting a clownfish. We're gonna start by drawing our fish on with pencil. I've got my reference photo on my iPhone over here so we can see it. Um, but it's always important to look at the photo first to study your picture and to just see what features we're looking at. So you can see we're painting this cute little clownfish. And how many fins do you see on the fish? Six. So there's two on the top and then one on the bottom that kind of matches the top two fins. And then there's these three little fins on, that are kind of around the front bottom of the fish. And there are also, what else do you notice about the fish that's so striking? Um, the stripes. Yeah, it has three white stripes. One around the head, one around the tail, and then one big stripe right down the center. And what would you say is the shape of the fish overall? A oval. An oval? Yeah, I think it looks like an oval too. So let's go ahead and start by making the basic oval shape of our fish. I'm gonna start with the nose here. I'm just making a round shape, and I'm gonna make the belly this kind of half circle. And then I'm not gonna completely finish the oval. I'm gonna bring it around so it almost completes, but not quite. Kind of looks like an eye. But we're gonna leave this spot here for the tail. All right, you go ahead and draw yours. Nice. All right, we have enough space to add the tail on. The tail almost looks like, what shape would you say that is? A circle. It's kind of a circle shape. And kind of a broccoli shape. <laughs> a broccoli shape. Good observation. Yeah, kind of comes out almost like a mushroom or a broccoli head, like that. Okay, add your tail on. And notice that the tail is not bigger than the body, it's smaller than the body. Very good. All right, let's add some fins. We're gonna do the two top fins. There's quite a bit of space here along the top of the head. As you can see in the photo, before we reach the first fin, I would say that this top fin is kind of in the middle of the body. You wanna draw your fin on? Okay, so we'll do one fin on the top. And then there's a little bit of space in between. And then the second fin is a half circle that comes over and touches the back tail. I want to draw my a little bit bigger. Okay, you can erase it if you want it to be bigger. That's fine. Farther. Okay. That's why we do this in pencil first. Ooh, that eraser is not good. Let me try a different one. If you make a mistake, you can always erase it if it's in pencil. Nice, and you added the little lines inside of that fin to make it more realistic. Very good, good looking. Let's do the bottom fins next. The first one is here at the front, and again, it's kind of in the middle of the body. And this one angles down almost like a round, almost an oval shape. And there's a black part here that we're gonna color in. And then there's another little tiny fin right next to it. All right, let's add the second fin on the bottom. It's another half circle. Imagine a straight line between this top fin and the bottom fin, and this one will touch that. So if I'm looking at mine, that fin will come about right here, about halfway in the middle of the fish. And it's also that mushroom slash broccoli shape, isn't it? A little flipper, little fin. So next let's do the white stripe around the fish's head. The shape that we see that's orange right here is almost a diamond shape, isn't it? So if we just do a little half circle right there and it makes that same shape as we see in the picture and that's the fish's head. And then we widen that stripe. We add another line that matches the shape of the first one. Now the middle stripe is a little different. It's wider. It comes right between the two top fins and the bottom fins. And because it's so big, it comes behind this fin here. And it almost makes a point in the middle, doesn't it? So we'll start that white shape at the top of our fin here come down to a point and then it's hidden behind this fin and then the other side of it actually connects to our bottom and top fins. All right, let's do the tail stripe next. 
So the tail stripe, it almost looks like a bandage wrapped around the tail. And this clownfish, he has a black mark that makes almost an oval shape all the way around the inside of his tail. Good, let's add the eye. The eye is on the top of the head and it's inside this little orange space in our fish and it's just a little black oval. And our fish has a little mouth. We can make him smiling. Beautiful, he looks so happy. Nice work. Now, on our clownfish, there are some distinctive black markings. So we're gonna take our Sharpies and we're gonna put those black markings in. You can see that the white stripes are all outlined in black and each of the fins and the tail fin has a black marking. So we're not gonna outline the entire fish in black, just the areas that have those black markings, okay? So let's go ahead and do the Sharpie. The nice thing about Sharpie is that when you paint with watercolor over the top, it will not budge, it won't water down with the water, it just stays put. We are drawing and painting on watercolor paper today. It's cotton watercolor paper and it will be wonderful for absorbing our watercolor and helping it look like our fish is swimming in water. So that'll be fun. After we paint our fish, we can add blue water behind our fish. I'm just gonna outline the belly because that part of our fish is gonna be in shadow. It's just gonna be a little darker. So I'd like to be able to see that really well. Our watercolors today are gonna be liquid watercolors. These are Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus Fine Art Watercolors, and they're so strongly pigmented. They're just wonderful as far as how they flow on the paper. Really fun to use. So I have this bright red and yellow, which when we mix them together, will make the orange for our clownfish. And then I also have a blue and green that we can use on the water after we've painted our fish. So while Ansley's finishing up her black outline, I'm gonna drop some paint onto our palette. Are we ready to paint? Yes. Okay, so let's start with the orange parts of our fish. Wet your brush a little bit and then dab the water, extra water out to the side of the cup so it's not sopping wet. Mm -hmm. And then let's take our orange mixture. We just mixed yellow and red together to make orange and we're just going to kind of color in the orange. Good. So just avoid this stripe, this stripe, and this stripe because those are going to be white, aren't they? Think about always leaving those three white stripes. That looks so cute. Oh, that's the white part. Remember? Add some blue shadows on the belly of my fish. Ansley's been getting confused about which sections are white and which sections are orange, and that's understandable. It's a little tricky. You have to let this dry before you add any blue to the stripes or else it'll all blend together. In fact, look at mine. Do you see how mine started to blend together a little too? Oops. So let the orange dry before you add the shade. And this blue we're gonna save for the water because it's gonna be super bright. Okay, so let's just wait for our little orange sections to dry. Now that the orange on our fish is dry, we can do the water. You excited? Yeah. Yeah, so just be careful to paint around the fish and try to leave some white edges where the fin is, just like you see in the picture on the tail fin. 
But other than that, you can take blue and green and just paint the water however you want. Ready? For my water, I'm actually gonna start by wetting the paper just around the fish with water first. What's fun about that is that when you wet the paper first, the paint will just kind of flow all over the wet area. You can do some water. You don't have to wait for it to dry. In fact, you want it to be wet while you put the blue in. I'm just doing a fun mixture of blue and green. Painting really fast with big side to side brush strokes. That's so pretty, isn't it? What's the color it blends in? Mm -hmm. It's gonna flood blending. It really is. Looking good. I love your rich blue and green colors in the water. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm just taking droplets of clean water and touching them to my wet paint and they're gonna, the droplets of water are gonna make the paint just kind of bloom and explode. Oh, it's great. Now you can try that where you take some clean water and just drop it on your paper. Watch me do it again. I'm just taking the tip of my brush with wet water and just going boop. And you can see how it makes the paint just kind of explode. I'm kind of making bubbles. Mm -hmm. And the more water, the bigger the explosion. <laughs> that looks awesome. I love those explosions of water. Very cool. Okay, here comes the fun part. Our paintings are all dry. They look amazing. You ready to take the tape off? Yes. Let's do it. Those look awesome. Perfect borders here. Let me take that. Love how the borders look. They almost look like greeting cards. Awesome job. We hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you're pacing along with us. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. We'll be posting new videos just for kids every Tuesday. And if you're interested in learning more about watercolor, I'll also be posting videos on Thursdays and Saturdays. Thanks for watching.